coming to you from the, from the hills of Texas right here. UFO Buster Radio is now on the air. You can visit the man in the big O at UFOBusterRadio.com. That's right. This is Bubba Doohickey saying, boys, squeal like a pig. Oink, oink, oink. Welcome to episode number 101. Today we have a special guest. He is here to tell us a little bit about a recent story or communication that I had with two individuals from the Czech Republic. Those two individuals are Ilona and Ivana, and they are in contact with an EBE, or Extraterrestrial Biological Entity, that goes by the name of Ali, and their story is unique. Now we have Brett on today because the truth is is that these two individuals the girls in the Czech Republic do not speak English what little they know comes from translations and it is uh, as you've heard really choppy and um, it's not exactly the Queen's English however they're receiving messages Ivana is a medium and once a week, they're in contact with this EBE. Brett aided them in the translation of the text that they printed, the book, and helped them translate the information into English. What I suggest is that we, we, we pay close attention to what, to what Brett is saying, because he himself has had his own paranormal experiences dealing with extraterrestrials. So... It probably isn't a coincidence that he came across these two individuals. But while you're listening, you might even want to take notes because you can see his thought process. He's rationalizing why Ivana and Ilona were able to have this type of contact. And he's taking time to ponder what it means. We will have Brett on on a future episode regarding his experiences because if you think that Ivana and Ilona's story is interesting, take a look at the bio for Brett that's in the description. I will be posting information in UBR Truth Seekers. I, I got a little bit tied up this weekend because Big O was in town, and so I got sidetracked. I was supposed to post information in there on Friday. I will do it today. So by the time you hear this, I'll start posting things in there regarding this story that you should probably look into. And there's some historical information that Brett also shares during the interview that might be fascinating and draw some correlations to what these two young ladies are experiencing in the Czech Republic. But enough of that. Let's get going. Let's get this interview started. All right, folks, I have with me today Brett Collins Shepard, and he is here to talk to us about the recent episode that I had regarding the contact that I received, a message basically, from uh, Ilona Bertarska, and their story is that they are in contact with an EBE by the name of Ali, and um, the way they they do the process is fascinating to me, uh, but her herself and her sister Ivana are the ones who contact Ali, and he's got plenty of messages. And uh, Brett, you actually helped him write their book. Is that correct? Um, I, I didn't write any of it. It is like literally translated from what their ET said. Okay, so you helped him with the and, English translation. Yeah, and what I, what I did is I did write a foreword to kind of explain what was going on. And, um, you know, some of my ideas about that. And I, I think it is tied in with their, uh, with their, their genetics, actually, you know, from the old European tribes. Okay. Because I, I think they've, they've always been contacted. So from what she's been saying, they, um, 
Her sister Ivana is a, a like a medium. Yes, she is. Kind of freaked Ilona out at first, but um, you know, um, she's completely with her, and they understand. They've they've also had experiences with ET contact and UFOs and all that, and they, so they've they've been kind of in it together the whole time. And, and what's amazing is is that they're they're hairdressers, you know. Oh, really? And the, the, yes, and the and the thing this EB says, so they're not really well educated people, you know, they're just regular educated. Okay. And this this ET is uh, blowing their minds with all of this um, very intricate scientific analysis of Earth and everything else. Um, you know, so it's it's a very unusual story. the The entity that they're in contact with is not is not really a gray alien oh, um, it's a different kind than we're used to you know apparently it has a, a kind of a bluish skin and it has peach fuzz white hair you know now so that's it's fascinating a, yeah it's different <laughs> so they're receiving like very uh like you said intricate information about things that they probably never had any exposure to that's exactly right it's not even in their subconscious they're very simple people their their ancestors are farmers you know um, they they live a, in a very peaceful little European town that not much is going on. Very religious, you know. Um, the, so it's a, it's a unique thing because of their their uh, socio socio status um, in that in that particular town. They've got these really religious um, people that are devout to God and all of that, and you know, very sincere about that. Y- yet they've come out of their shell with this stuff, you know, because it's, it is simply just happening. That's all I can say about that. It, right. It's, it's, it's happening and, and they're passionate enough to, to want to get this out to the world because the CT is telling them that it, the information needs to get out. And of course they wonder why them, you know, right? I why, would too. Why, why not? Why not a scientist or somebody that understands it? Now, from what you're saying, you believe that they're almost uh, genetically predisposed to receiving this message. I believe they are, um, just like the Irish are. You know, they're from the the old, um, what they mythologically called the Tuath de Danon, which is from the Dar- um, um, Darini tribes of the north of Ireland. And, and the Darini tribes are actually the Dardanians that came over with the Danes and all that from the Balkans. And they were the old Illyrian tribes. The uh, King Dard- Dardanus in that area, this was um, quite a long time ago, was one of the founders of Troy. And when I say founding Troy, I'm talking about 6,000 years before Samaria. Mm-hmm. You know, that that's how old the, the Trotsian Empire is. Right. So we're talking about Thr- Thrace and Istanbul and all that. Um, the, the thing is, is that all of this stuff is running along the Danube River all the way to the Black Sea. And you've heard of the old Vinca cultures or whatever. Yes. Well, it, they don't. They don't tell us what the Vinca cultures are, but I will right now. I'll, I'll tell you. They're the Illyrian tribes, the Dacian tribes. These are the you know ancient Greeks and Romans. You know. Mm-hmm. Then there's the the uh, the Thracians or Thrace. You know those tribes. Mm-hmm. And there there's the ancient Greeks. And when I say ancient Greeks, I'm not talking about when they built their structures. Longer than that, you know. And then, then there's um, the uh, Illyrians, you know, which, which are the the modern day Albanians. That is their ancient ancestors. And all of these people claim to be from the stars. Um, some of them are from the old Scythian tribes, out in the Gobi Desert, and you know, above Iran and um, along the the Carpathian Mountains, you know, around that area. And the, these, these are, um, some of them became the Assyrians. So they, these are the ancient Jewish people. They're the Assyrians that, that actually wrote, um, the, the Illumination and, and they were the Chaldeans, you know, from Turkey and they, they migrated down to the Fertile Crescent and wrote the, uh, um, the Illumination and the seven tablets of creation and all of that. So this, this is where this ideology comes from, is the Brahmins, you know, from this area. And um, that's part of the ancestry that broke off. And the other ones went up, and we called them today Vikings and Danish people and, you know, um, basically Nordics that broke off and went around the Black Sea um, through, uh, through um, the Ukraine and all of that. And a lot of people don't know that this, 
this ideology and the, this religion um, that we call Sumerian or Anunnaki and whatnot mm-hmm. um, is is very old. Um, it, it was written 3,000 years ago about a much earlier time. And in the Ukraine, they actually worshipped I, I, um, Inanna. That's the, you know, the one that looks like a bee girl in Samaria on okay. the tablet uh-huh. um, with the wings and the um, the the two owls or uh, what is that? No, they're actually two lions. And this is a reference to the old Sibelian stuff from Turkey. It's a part of their older culture, the goddess worship and all that. Um, this was Sibel and um, it, it was strictly a Phrygian type thing and this is in, around turkey in the black sea and so you say this, that the uh that the town that they live in is very religious what what religion is that that's prevalent yes it, it's usually it's, it's usually roman catholic and and um some of it is um the slavic one um the uh what is that i can't really think of it they're the ones that wear the funny hats or whatever orthodox so they're they're the Orthodox ones. So yeah, very very Catholic, um, lots of Catholic. So it seems almost like uh, in the messages that I received from Ilona is that I guess the uh, her experiences with uh, the EBE and Ivana, uh, it's yeah. not being received really really well. Of course not. They you know because they they would like to demonize all of that, and they, you know that it's not just that, but the EB says that th- that it. Per- prefers to speak in their language so the old slavic languages with the old letters and a lot of those yes and a lot of those letters um are are based on nature you know like the wavy lines and the mountains and all of that Mm -hmm. and that's where they get their old um, letters from their older societies or cultures and uh, if if you look um if the listeners want to look online they they can look up vinca the vinca culture um language you know, and and they'll they'll get or Vinca culture symbols, and they'll get a whole bunch of stuff on Google. Um, there, there's these letters are are um, what what the basis was for the Illyrian language, um, for the the proto well they call it proto Jewish, but it's not cr- accurate. It's it's the old Phoenician letters from Carthage, so they were actually Carthaginian. The people from Carthage, it's very interesting because um, they are uh, part of the Jewish bloodline or the Assyrian Jewish bloodline, Um, and what a lot of people don't know is that the Hebrew is is very much, it's kind of a combo. It's based on this old Phoenician style um, that's kind of blocky and the Arabic style. So you have this Arabic type language, you know, with the fire letters. So it's kind of a combination of that. And um, the the thing is about these these old letters, it's very important to know is that this language may have been inspired by extraterrestrials. They they may have taught us to look at nature and and you know formulate letters and things that are based on nature. So they they used to communicate with graphics. In other words. They used to communicate with a picture or a symbol as opposed to, to trying to make letters or words out of it. Right. So some of these things got, over time, strung together into words. and But the meaning has been lost, is what I'm saying. So the, this extraterrestrial likes to communicate um, in that graphic style, and it's he's very morphogenic. Um, in other words, he'll, he'll um, some at times, seem like he's making words up but it's just to get us to understand it in our mirror minds. We were talking before the episode, uh, before we started recording, and it sounds like they are, since the, uh, what, mid-90s, they are still weekly in contact with this EBE. Yes, they are. They, um, every every week, like clockwork, um, they, they could actually do it any time, but they have to make a living and work all week, you know? Right. Um, so, you know, when, when they have free any free time... Um, the the EB knows that they're working. He, he knows when they're when they're off work and they're ready to go. You know, right? Um, the, this thing, I, it's very interesting because the last September third contact were questions that I asked the EB in English over Skype. Oh, really? Now the girls don't. Yes, and the girls do not speak English. You know yes. that. Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> um, they don't understand what I'm asking or anything else. And I, I didn't translate it or anything for them to see if the EB would answer me in English. Mm-hmm. And he did. So they're, they are currently transcribing what his answers were so that I can compare them to my question. That's a really fascinating interaction because she's having to translate for the Westerners. 
you know, what yes. they're asking and, and trying to get the information out. But she's also at the same time, almost transcribing what he's saying. It's that's exactly it's right. Um, uh, I, Ilona is definitely the transcriber of this interaction. Mm -hmm. um, everything is going through Ivana. And what she does is she'll sit there with um, what I would call a Ouija board because it has letters and numbers on it. Mm -hmm. And it's a, written in a circular pattern. And she has a, a shot glass that's in the center of the board. And she is really booking with this thing when it's starting to talk to her. You know? Oh, really? Yes. And, and I think when... When it hits a letter like A or B, she's not actually spelling stuff out. I could be wrong, but it, it's it's also a telepathic communication. As these letters are going, what is popping into your mind, Ivana, right? Right. So there's sort of a telepathic thing going on as well. Um, the EB said that he is not a ghost. He's not a spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he said he's very much in our in in our reality. You know, up in space in a craft or on another planet from Elijah. You know, I guess the planet is called. And so she's really booking along with this thing. And and Ilona is writing this stuff down as she's saying it. She's talking out loud. You know, and she's writing everything that Ivana says down. The at times, um, I, I don't know if this is true, but I believe that there is also a telepathic type communication with the sisters. Oh, really? In between the both of them? And between the both of them, you know, so things aren't, aren't getting lost in translation or anything. So she's actually knowing what she's subconsciously thinking about what E.B.'s saying. Mm -hmm. That's it's very interesting stuff, you know. Now, is there actual video of the interaction? Yes, there is. Yeah, you can go to YouTube and and look up some of that. Look up e either. Uh, I'm. I wouldn't have people look up Pradovaska. I don't even know how to spell that. You know. Right. <laughs> but if you look up um, Czech Girl ZT Contact or something like that on YouTube, you'll run into that. Yeah, I think she said she has a new Absolutely. channel also. Um, it, it's it's Czech Girls ET Contact all lowercase one word dot blogspot dot com. So that that's their website where you can find their book and all of that. You may have to translate their website. It's in Czech, you know. Yeah, I think Google can actually do that for you for the website. But my question at this point is, I mean, here you are, you, you basically, and I'm going to put your bio in the description for the episode, but you've had your own experiences with the paranormal uh, and ETs and so forth. But how do you come across... And actually get yes. to meet these two young ladies from the Czech Republic. Well, I, w I was um, extremely fascinated. I was looking things up um, about, um, well, and I was writing a lot about it, um, about um, graphic communication and extraterrestrial communication between humans and ETs. And I was extremely fascinated about that. Um, I had made a lot of friends, and I believe I met them through um, the lady that did the foreword to my book, and her name is Nancy Duterte, and she worked with Ingo Swan. Um, you know, uh, she was the last one to work with him, actually. And she's a she's a detective, um, a paranormal detective. She is a remote viewer. She's oh. found a lot of missing children and all of that. She works with the police, and and um, she's very good. You know, very good at her job. And she wrote a book on how to talk to. Ex, um, aliens, How to Talk to Aliens by Nancy Duterte. And I met Ilona and them through her. They were her friends on Facebook. And we contacted each other and started talking about all of this stuff. And I said, the same thing is happening to me, but I'm doing it through the through graphics, through looking at pictures. And I'm seeing the same kind of divination within our space images and that. Mm -hmm. So the, that's one of the things that I was talking to them about. And it's not just a, a happenstance kind of thing, you know, it, um, going all the way back to when I was 15 years old, uh, a lady from SRI named, uh, named Zamina Zarita showed me one picture after another for hours of my own work that I would to be do, uh, that I'd, I'd be interpreting and perceiving in the future. So it's a very strange thing to see your own work, um, and realizing that when you're 40 years old that they showed me when I was 15 years old, everything I'm doing right now. With all your experience, what do you, what do you think is, uh, basically what's the aim of this EB with the, these two young ladies in the Czech Republic? Like what's the end game? Oh, what, what is, what is it trying to do? It, it, it's trying to get us to learn peaceful technology. 
And, and I mean, um, communication is included in that technology. So, um, the, the technology of perception to be able to, <clears throat> to be able to, um, know that you're forming a hologram in your mind by perceiving, you know, with your right or left brain, sometimes it's flipped around, you know, but they want you to know all aspects of that so that they can communicate with everybody. Um, that's one of the technologies. The other one is the natural technologies, just like the real girls were doing during Nazi Germany. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, this was from the Thule Society, the esoteric part of Nazi Germany. And it was Maria Orsig and her father, Thomas Orsig, which is a lot of people don't know about him. He was, he was the middleman. He took Maria Orsic's work. And the reason why I say that is because the Czech girls remind me of the real girls of Nazi Germany. You know, same exact kind of communication. They used a Ouija board. Mm -hmm. They used the same style that, he, that Ivana does. And um, Maria was doing Ilona's job. She was the one that was transcribing everything. Sigourn was, was um, getting through with the mediumship. So th this, this is a very interesting thing that all of this stuff is happening around Germany and Czechoslovakia, right? Um, uh, over uh, periods of time. Well, what happened was, um, like, the the real girls, uh, Maria Orsic was getting in a lot of technological um, designs in that for UFOs or Nazi UFOs, Hanabus, real craft, and all of that, based on what they call real energy, which is just another word for Earth energy, right. like the electromagnetics and the vortex energy. So they, they want Earth to learn everything there is to know about their peaceful technology. Um, that we have on earth, you know, like vortex energy, electromagnetics. This is the problem is that the military wants to weaponize everything. Mm -hmm. And EB talks about that as well, that that's a very dangerous thing that we won't let that happen. They have actually been disabling our, our UFO. Uh, these UFOs have been disabling our arms, uh, military nuclear facilities, um, as, as well as the peacekeeper missiles that you've heard about, you know, going up and the little uh, spacecraft would shoot a ball of plasma at it or whatever and disable it. Yes. That's been witnessed by Ken Johnston and, and many others that actually were there at Vandenberg Air Force Base. Um, and there was another guy, Robert Salas, that, that was the commander with the missile silos. It's a very interesting story for people to look at. The UFOs would actually come there and, and disable their underground nuclear facility, you know, completely. So the, they do not want us to kill ourselves. I mean, that's the basic pr uh, premise of all of this. Um, the, the ETs are contacting the girls because it knows that they're just hairdressers. And I, mm -hmm. I don't mean to say just. I think that's a wonderful occupation, you know. Right. Um, but they're not scientists. They're not, you know, nuclear physicists or anything like that. And so I believe that that is very much on purpose, you know, because they can't go directly to a nuclear physicist and expect them to understand because they usually work for the military or the industrial complex. And these guys, their, their sole interest is what can I sell and what weapon can I make for the military? Basically, all of these ET contacts that are happening all over the world, um, and it's very individualized, you know, as far as perception goes with these people. And none of them are going to be religious leaders or, or political leaders. They can't be, you know, for us to realize that, hey, they actually exist because we've been lied to so much that we wouldn't know it if they told us. You know what I mean? You know? Yeah, oh, absolutely. It's kind of, it's almost like a paradox here because it's like you, you almost yeah. want like their peaceful technology to end up in the hands of someone that can do something with what, they're receiving, but it doesn't seem like right. we, it ever gets to that point. Yes, I, it, that's exactly right. You know, um, I, I wish we would get to that point, and I think it's going to have to come after their systems fail. You know what I mean? Right. It, it's going to have to be that way, more of a social type of environment rather than, you know, this, this political, aggressive, fascist kind of state, you know. But, you know, that that's... Um, I believe that that's one reason why all of these extraterrestrials and it, it's happening to more than just Ilona and Ivana. It's happening all over the world with someone's special gifts or talents or whatever their, their special way that they can perceive something. And one thing I'd like people to know is that when you read some of these, these, um, transcriptions from this extraterrestrial that, that Ivana is, um, ha having go through her, um, 
I, I would use your own perception. It's absolutely critical that that happens because we're all, we're all part of the human race and we have to put this puzzle together ourselves. You know, we, the, this is the the most important thing. We can't have all one mindset like a bug. You know, right? Um, to, because that that's also a nightmare. That's some people's description of utopia where everyone's walking around going, yes, I understand, I'm telepathic, you know, or whatever. And we really can't have that either. That's not the way Earth works. Earth has its own weird system of energy and everything else. And all humans are, are somewhat telepathic. They kind of get this idea, oh, or the sense that something's wrong, you know. So all humans have that ability. And they can all do uh, learn remote viewing. That's a very easy thing. Ingo Swan kind of laid that out for the layman, you know, mm -hmm. and, and he was he was actually teaching military people. And we know how unintelligent that they're made to be, you know, right. because <laughs> they have to follow orders. Right. Right. A lot of this stuff came out of Fort Meade. And um, one of the guys that learned how to use Ouija boards and all of that weird stuff, you know, they kind of let the hippies into the army to teach them remote viewing and how to communicate with um, extraterrestrials or whatever or even how to communicate with them to find information about Russia or something, you know. Mm -hmm. So so that was their goal, to militarize um, this psychic warfare. You know, so they, they taught people at Fort Meade how to use a Ouija board and how to communicate um, with the other side, so to speak, um, so that they could learn more about their enemies and all of that. And you might, um, some people might remember the movie the, the Men That Stare at Goats about Colonel Alexander and, and what, and Michael Aquino, even though they don't say that's about them, it is. That's exactly what it's about. And these guys, you know, were, were trained to to literally, you know, stare at goats and, and make them have a heart attack or something to that nature. So they were trying to weaponize psychic ability. Um, the, all of this stuff, a lot of this stuff was happening at Fort Meade um, in the United States. And when these guys were sent overseas to Germany... The wall was still up. It was the late 80s or so. Mm -hmm. And one guy by the name of Vance Davis was a, communi uh, a communications expert. He was a radio operator, and he was talking to the basically the enemy on the other side of the wall, And um, which I don't consider an enemy. I never did, you know. But at the time, it was like us and them, the Russians and the United States, you know, before Reagan said, you know, Gorbachev, you know, take down that wall and all this stuff. Uh, before that, they were kind of, there was an animosity. It was a, it was, it was a cold period where they didn't know whether they were going to go to war or not. And the reason why I know that is because I was actually there. I was in the headquarters battery, second and 39th field artillery over in Germany. Oh, really? Yes. And we used to go to Grafenvir and it was right on the Czechoslovakian border where Ilona and Ivana live. So, you know, the, it was a very scary time because we didn't know if we were going to be going to war there or in the Middle East or wherever. So we had alerts every week, you know, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't tell us whether it was real or not. We just had to, you know, pack up all the stuff and get all of our weapons and do all this other jazz. I was a medic, you know, so I was definitely going to go to the war, you know. Right. No doubt. Anyway, we were we we were having some of those um, some of those routines over in Germany, and Vance Davis, who I wasn't with at the same exact time, but he was there in the later 80s, and he was communicating with um, with, with extraterrestrials through a Ouija board with some friends, and there wow. were six of them, and they, they called them the Gulf Breeze Six. They went AWOL, and they went back to the United States, and um, they were told to meet extraterrestrials in Gulf Breeze, Florida. So they got out in um, South Carolina or somewhere like that, and then they... They trucked down to, they were starting to go down to Florida and they got caught. And they basically threw them in the brig or whatever because they were AWOL. Um, Vance Davis um, was, was also one of the guys later on that was work, either him or his friends um, were actually working on satellite dishes on the moon that communicate with extraterrestrials. All this stuff is yeah. happening and, and yet people don't know about it. They don't know yet. And the the mainstream media is kind of bought and paid for, as you know. Right. And even the alternative media is controlled by MUFON, some of the higher echelons of MUFON, um, and other organizations, you know, that that are trying to make some kind of peachy 
religion, you know, that's similar to Christianity or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, the new age stuff. And, uh, one of, one of the guys, some of the guys that are doing all that kind of work is over in, uh, Pine Gap, Australia. So the guys out of Pine Gap, they have think tanks where they sit around and think about, um, um, stories of how they're super soldiers and how, how they, they were, they were with the secret space program and all of this other stuff. Now, Corey Good kind of, kind of comes out of that camp. You know, of a bunch of guys that, that tell these fantastic stories uh, about how they went 20 years and back into another dimension in space and all this other jazz. I don't know about that. I'm just throwing that out there. Right. <laughs> but you know, you know, anyway, that's 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 what their thing was. But it's very interesting over in Europe. Um, it, it's not a complete normal thing that somebody is is having ET contact or something like that. It's very special, you know. Mm hmm. Um, in Russia, it's more common that those guys tell a lot of stories over there. But this particular area where Ilona and Ivana are, it, it's it's kind of uptight. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, the, the people there are kind of uptight. It's, it's not, you know, not that far from Bosnia, you know, where they were bombing the crap out of them mm-hmm. in the 90s or whatever. It, it's it's not that far from that tension still from Russia and and the um, Balkan type regions, so Syria and all that, you know. Yeah. So the, this area has experienced an incredible amount of trauma and warfare, and it's kind of the epicenter of where all of this stuff started, you know. So of course the extraterrestrial, the extraterrestrials are attracted to military. They're attracted to um, these wars that are going on because they want to stop them, you know. They want to tell us, hey, quit that. That's not right. They've, they've actually um, been seen in ancient uh, Scotland, and that's what Scotland is based their flag on, is looking up at a UFO and seeing that, that white cross. So when you first came across the, uh, I guess they're helping them in kind of translating that book into English, was there anything yes. in there that really stood out to you like, you know, well, yeah, this sells it for me. This is, this is really a- really happening. This is for real. Yes, every bit of it. I mean, oh, really? perceptually. Yeah, every every single bit of it um, means something because even the stuff that doesn't really sound right mm-hmm. is um, is a mirror image. So, you know, the, this, the way we process things perceptually, the ET has to actually do it backwards on his side of the box okay. because he knows that what we see is a mirror. So, in other words, he, he says it wrong on purpose, Um because it sounds right when Ivana gets the information and it gets translated, if that makes any sense. It's a really strange type of communication. So I, when, it, when we look at something and we perceive something with our eyes, it, it makes a backwards hologram, almost an inverse hologram. Mm-hmm. And, and that's how, how we store information. So it's, it's something to really keep in mind. Are we, are we really seeing the world backwards as it is? See what I mean? Um, from what the other extraterrestrials might see. Um, that I do believe in extraterrestrials. There's no doubt in my mind I've seen them. I, I, I see, saw their craft um, dr- basically flying in front of me, going 70 miles per hour down Highway 10. I, I'm that close to them, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so I know this stuff is real, and I want people to know that, that discernment is a good thing, and perception is a very good thing. Um, to to really think about, you know, ponder the perception of what we really see and how we really think about things. The media uh, people, they know this, and, and they are bombarding us with their what, what they want our perception to be, like constantly, you know. Right. Because they have control, of basically, course, of what we of we see and hear. Yes, they do. And and the mind control is real good. I mean, they, they have think tanks. They sit there all day and think about, you know, um, what can we suggest here that's sexual? What can we suggest here that's, um, that, that makes, makes them want to have babies, you know, or, you know what I mean? So they, they do sit around and think about things like that. How, do, how do we want them to perceive the military? You know, what do we want them to think about UFOs? So, um, the, yeah, some of that work was done in the early fifties with the, the dorky flying saucers and all that. They, they wanted people to have a certain perception. And what's interesting is the actual UFOs that they were flying around were Hanaboos and Vril 
kind of an upgraded version of that, you know, that Bob Lazar was working on with Element 15, 115 and all that from another planet. And the shell of these things were actually from the, the old technology from Nazi Germany. So they were the Vrilcraft and the Hanabus that the Germans were working on, kind of clunky. And they were flying these things around in southern Utah and in California. There's actually pictures of them. Um, great UFO pictures, no doubt. But they're not really completely ours. You know, just the technology that flies them is actually um, uh, from another planet. You know what I mean? Right. And, and all of this stuff is using uh, Earth energy. Schauberg and all of these uh, paperclip scientists that came over to help NASA develop their space program were working on electromagnetics, electrogravitics. They were working on rocketry, of course. Um, and the rocketry was a fuel-based perception that they wanted the the American public and the world to believe is that we're that we have a fuel-based economy, you know, to keep their money going and all of that. So that was very important um, uh, to as a front for the secret space program, which has always been in there. We had, we had already moon bases in the 1950s on the moon through project horizon. And this was through general Trudeau, the a French American general that was working directly with Eisenhower. So it, this stuff goes re back really far. And Eisenhower met the extraterrestrials literally and his genetics, his family or his ancient family is actually from, um, the eastern side, or sorry, the western side of Germany, right above France. Oh, really? And he, yeah, he used to spell his name um, H A U R instead of H O W E R. Eisenhower, you know. So there is uh, a strong so, connection to that region. We we seem not there to is be able a, to escape. Yes, yes, there is an extremely strong connection to that area in particular, and uh, even in Nazi Germany, they were they were actually communicating with. Aldebarons or ETs or whatever through a Ouija board, just like the girls are doing today. You know, it's a very interesting thing. Um, if if your your listeners don't know who the Vril Girls are or the Thule Society, T H U L E Society from Nazi Germany, they should look that up because it's not Nazi stuff. It's esoteric stuff that goes all the way back to the Teutonic Order, and these Teutonic Knights basically wiped out all the men of the of the Teuton tribes of ancient Germany. And the the women, um, instead of being captured, they killed their children and themselves. It's a very horrible thing. And they call that the Teutonic Fury. And these Catholic Teutonic Knights named themselves in a sick way after after that massacre. Wow. So so these these they were the Black Cross. That's the Teutonic Knights. And they, they, their order kind of dissipated um, for a very long time and picked up again during peacetime when they weren't at war or anything like that. And the Teutonic order, out, um, some of them out of Turkey, by the way, you know, it's an old Teutonic knight order out of Turkey. Um, they, these guys formed the Thule Society before there was kind of a Nazi Germany. It was just kind of being thrown around there. But they had an esoteric society long before the Nazis kind of took over Germany. And one thing I'd like to say about the that real quick is that that was actually a Roman Catholic empire. It was a it was a Roman Catholic Reich. It was not you know um, just Hitler or something like that. We can't blame everything on the puppets. Right. Otherwise, we'd be blaming Trump for everything, and we know how stupid <laughs> he is. You know, part of the basis for this particular podcast is kind of introduce people to. Uh, this part yes. of the, the ufology conversation basically is getting someone that's like a blue collar person to understand that there's more than what they see on TV or here on the radio, that there's things that uh, are not being talked about in the general media, like you said. How do you yeah. prepare someone to, let's say, take, you know, Ilona and, Iv and Ivana's book and have that uh, open mind to what is being published? Well, I, I, I would say one thing that's, that's very important. Um, yes, their, their work is amazing. Um, what, what they're doing for the world right now for free, you know, is amazing. Um, their, their book is being published, you know, basically at cost, you know, for people that want it. And I, I would suggest that, um, people get in contact with them on Facebook or, um, or look on their website or, um, just 
go to Amazon and type in Czech Girl ZT Contact. And um, the reason why their book is so important for the world is because they didn't want this to happen. They would just rather have a regular life, you know? Right. Um, this is the message that is coming through to them that they feel is important because of what it's saying. Um, and they think it, it, if the right people hear it, that it'll change things. And I believe that too, you know, um, the, the thing about their work, as far as the blue collar understanding of it, you don't have to understand it, you know, cause I don't understand a lot of it either. Um, but I, I would say, um, as far as, extraterrestrial contact or something like that um people dream a lot you know so when you're at, you know, sleeping at night and you're dreaming pay attention to your dreams because they're they're not all just arbitrary they're not all, all just spiritual or something like that there is a lot of information coming through the morphogenic field and some of those are et contacts so i believe every person on this earth has been contacted somehow Oh, well, that's fascinating. I've never really thought about that in that way. Yeah, absolutely. So when, you know, when you're looking at a picture, a special way that you look at things that you're, maybe your make, friends make fun of you for being a little weird or something like that, you know, um, that, that is your special gift. You know, that, that's your special way to see things and it can be taught. In fact, it shouldn't even have to be taught because it's just our human ability, our human understanding. So it's when we break these things apart and separate each other from these different perceptions or we make fun of each other or something like that, that that's, um, that's something that's entirely unnecessary. We, we should embrace the differences that we have. Absolutely. And, and we, we should be able to look at those things, um, the perception from another as a, as a piece to the puzzle. Just like you said, I hadn't really thought about it like that. Yeah, and it, it could be too that people are just, uh, might just be perceiving this from a spiritual perspective and not really realizing that this might be from somewhere else. Yeah, that, you know, if there, if it's true that there's really no such thing as death, and even the religious people believe that, that, you know, we shed our mortal coil or whatever and, and either go to heaven, hell, or purgatory or whatever they believe, that is another place that they believe that we go. So why wouldn't that exist? Why wouldn't dimensions exist alongside of each other? You know, yeah, it so we, we have, yeah, we have all of these things that, that human beings believe, but then when it comes down to it or whatever, they start making fun of each other. What's that all about? You know? Right. Right. Well, you know, I definitely am going to include the book for uh, Ilona and Ivana in the description and kind of shoot it out there oh, through social you. media. But the, yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, but uh, also, like I said at the beginning, you have your own extensive uh, uh, background in this topic, which we are definitely wanting to have you back. But I guess maybe uh, we can give people like a, a little, a quick view as to why was it so, I guess, so, uh, so easy for you to kind of uh, get into what the messages that they were receiving and how they were receiving them, because you have your own experience, too. Yes, my own experience sort of correlates with theirs, so I understand them very well. I, I know how hard it is to um, to put this information out there without being made fun of or called a demon or um, you're in, in cahoots with little alien demons or whatever. You know, I, I understand all that, but it's not for them. It's for someone that needs the information. So everything that this little bits and pieces of this information that's coming through these, these um, transcriptions um, from Ivana are um or from Eli uh, Ebioli from Elijah, you know, mm -hmm. are are mean something to a, a certain person or a particular individual at some certain time, you know. And that that's how morphogenic information works. So when I say more morphogenic, I'm talking about like kind of Ru Rupert Sheldrake stuff. Um he he kind of came up with the concept of there being a morphogenic field where our ideas float around and the atmosphere and all that. Um, the thing is, is that I felt very compelled to help them because of their position. You know, they, mm -hmm. here they are, they're, they're, they're hairdressers. They don't really know how to format a book or anything, you know, to get it out there. They, they needed a lot of help to get some of this information out. And I was happy to do that. I, I had written a couple of books, so I knew how to format their 
their book. And both of them insisted that I do not change a word that this EB is saying. So, so the language uh, looks like when you're reading the book, it looks like, uh, it looks like a telegraph that you would receive or something, you know, um, mm-hmm. from the old days. It's, it's kind of choppy sentences, but they mean a lot, you know. There's a lot of meaning within the sentences. Um, some of it reads pretty good. Some of it is very, very choppy, you know, just to warn people about. It's not, it's not your typical English book. So I, I'm probably going to get hit hard with that, you know. You, <laughs> why didn't you, why didn't you, you transcribe it in perfect English? Well, because it ruins the message, you know, mm-hmm. for some. Um, it, and, of course I was dying to do that. Of course I was dying to to put it in perfect English in my own perception, you know? But see how wrong that would be? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, so that that's one of the interests that I had as far as helping them and all. And I, I did feel a connection with them because my roots are also Irish and Dardanian where they're, you know, same ancestry, you know, pretty much. So it's... It's something that I, I felt passionate about because, I, you know, I was into the ancient history stuff and something really resonated with me that, that an extraterrestrial would contact them in that particular area. And I had known about the Gulf Breeze guys, you know, um, contacting EBs through a Ouija board. The real girls contacted EB through a Ouija board. And now the Czechoslovakian girls contacting EB through a Ouija board. This isn't just a coincidence. Yeah, there there seems to be a like an an avenue of communication that I guess most people are missing out on. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, for the listeners, if they want to Google Vance Davis and Gulf Breeze, um, that'll get you to some of the, some of the stories about that. And um, according to Vance, um, he said they went religious with the article. That that he was you know told by Jesus to go to Gulf Breeze or something. He said that's not true. You know it was actually an alien that he was communicating with overseas, and um, it, it wasn't it wasn't some godly calling to Gulf Breeze or something like that. Mm-hmm. So he, he wanted me to tell people that. That is just an amazing story. Well, listen, Brett, I thank you very much for joining us today. Like I said, I'm going to get all this information out within the description. Uh, and hopefully in the near future, we get to have you back so you can tell your story uh, regarding oh, your sure experiences, because um, I think it'll be phenomenal for people to hear that as well. Okay, great. I appreciate that. So, yeah, thank you very much. It's nice to meet you. Okay, folks, there you have it. That was Brett Collins Shepherd, and he shared the story of Ilona and Ivana and EBE, Ollie. And like he said... Their method of communication is very fascinating. It's uh, not something you hear about a lot. You know, you have someone that's transcribing for a medium who is basically getting information from 4.24. I'm going to have the link in the description to the first text that Ilona published with, uh, with the translations from Brett into English. And like he says... When I played the audio a couple of episodes ago about um, from the YouTube video, it is broken English. But we know that now, we know now that the reason why that is is because Ilona and Ivana want to preserve the way they're receiving the messages. So I'll, I'll include the link to that Amazon text in the in the description as well as to the uh, again into the YouTube channel which has the videos. Listen, this is a different story than what we've had on the podcast before, but it is a fascinating one. It's intriguing. And if you want to know more, the only way to do it is to, like Brett said, get out there, do some research and read about the different stories that he's actually quoted because they're historical. They're they're not things that are happening now uh, as far as things back in Germany and the folks that dealt with the Gulf Breeze situation. But it's another method of communication and all with the underlying theme that they're trying to reach the regular blue collar person as opposed to someone that is part of the military that might turn all of this information into something that is negative and harmful to the people on this planet. But as always, you have to make that decision 
You have to read the information and come to your own conclusion. This is Manny Moonraker. I'm checking out. I look forward to having Brett to hear his story. His bio is in the description. Check it out. Lots of info in it. Thanks for listening. Ciao.